dear brothers and sisters uh, in Christ, we thank our Heavenly Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ uh, for giving this wonderful opportunity to discuss uh, His wonderful words of life. So as you all know, uh, since last uh, few months, uh, we have been studying the first volume that has been written by our uh, elder brother, uh, brother uh, Charles Taze Russell. And especially we were uh, studying the first chapter of the first volume. You see the joy cometh uh, in the morning. And there uh, we have seen uh, uh, several things about how this uh, book uh, is written. And what is the purpose of writing this book? And uh, last few weeks uh, we have seen how this uh, truth uh, has been completely uh, covered with errors. So, last few weeks, a few brethren have already covered a little bit of, uh, you see, paragraphs uh, of this book. So, today, we will continue uh, from page 23 uh, in English, page 23, uh, that's the first paragraph. Can any of the brethren from the Solomon Island, can you read uh, uh, from that uh, volume, brother, page number 23? First uh, paragraph. Uh, anybody? Jonah, brother, Jana, sister, Francis, brother. Yes, yes, brother. I will read. Thank you, sister. Yes, serious indeed have been the evil results brought about by this neglect of the truth. As all known, both the cheats and the civilized world were almost wholly enslaved by the system and lead to worship the tradition and greeds of men. From this slavery, a born and blessed strike for liberty and the Bible was made. In what is known as the Reformation, God raised up both champions for this world, world among whom were Luther, Swingling, Mal Melkadon, Wycliffe, Knox, and others. This call attention to the fact that papacy had laid aside the Bible and substituted the degrees and do dogmas of the church and pointed out a few of its erroneous, erroneous teaching and practice, showing that they were built upon tradition, contrary to truth and opposed to God's word. These reformers and though and their adherents were adherents were called Protestants because they protest against papacy and claim the word of God as the only correct rule of faith and practice. Many faithful souls in the days of the Reformation walked in the light, so far as it was the shining but since the days Protestant, Protestants have made little progress because instead of walking in the light, they have halted around their favorite leaders, willing to see as much as they saw, but nothing more. They set boundaries to the progress in the way of truth, hedging in with the little truth they had. A great deal, a great deal with error brought along from the mother church for the Greeks though thus formulated many years ago the majority of Christians have a superstitious reverence supposing that no more can be known of God's plan now than was known by the river mass <clears throat> done brother thank you sister uh, so dear brethren uh, here uh, uh, we see how uh, the Reformation uh, came and how the Arabs also crept in uh, through that uh, Reformation activities also. So, can uh, any of the brethren uh, uh, share their views of, of, as to what they understand in this paragraph, especially in the first part? It tells uh, the... Uh, serious indeed have been the evil results uh, brought about by this neglect of the truth. So, what was the 
uh, some of the evil results uh, that uh, actually crept inside the church because of the neglect of the truth. Can anybody give any examples, any uh, doctrine examples uh, uh, that crept inside the initial part of the church uh, that is due to because of uh, this evil results of this uh, effect of this uh, papacy system? Hmm. Any of the brethren? Yes, brother. Hmm. Maybe Trinity or? Yes. Very good example. Trinity. You see, the, the main uh, blasphemous doctrine about Trinity that uh, God is claimed to be a three in one and a one in three. Where father is equal to the son and son is equal to the Holy Spirit. Uh, so both are one and the same. So that's the doctrine, you see, which uh, actually God uh, detest. And nowhere in the Bible, you see, it's uh, given that the uh, father is the son and the son is the father and the father is the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is the father and he is Jesus. Uh, so same is nowhere given. So this is a, one of the example of a very serious error, you see, that has crept uh, in, inside the church. Why? Why did it come inside the church, if you see? It is mainly because of the neglect of the truth. Uh, you see, so uh, do you remember, do anybody remember, when did this uh, doctrine of uh, Trinity actually began to come inside the church? Any idea? It was during whose period that uh, this doctrine of Trinity began to come into the church. We have read about the seven churches uh, in the book of Revelation. You see, the first church, the second church, you see, third. And during which period of the church that, uh, you see, this uh, doctrine of uh, Trinity began to crept inside the church? Any idea? Anybody? Okay, it was during the period of uh, Arius. We know about uh, Arius and uh, Athanasius. Uh, Arius uh, and Athanasius were actually a Presbyterian uh, in the, you see, papacy system. Arius uh, stood for the cause uh, that the father and the son are uh, totally separate. Uh, they're two different identities. But Athanasius... Uh, he began to claim that the father is the son and the son is the father and began to fight for it. And because of that one, there was a political instability in the government. And that is the time that uh, there was a, you see, council uh, in Nicaea, that is in 325 AD, you see. So that is the time that uh, this doctrine was debated a lot and the emperor saw that... Uh, because of this doctrine, there's a lot of commotion happening in his uh, Roman uh, Empire. And majority of the people who had come there, they were never Christians. They were actually from a pagan background. They had never read the Bible. So once uh, they came into Christianity, there uh, used to be no Bible because the Bible was in the dead language, in the Latin language. They used to just believe what the uh, Presbyterians say. And uh, majority of them were uh, the followers of Athanasius doctrine. So since then, the Athanasius creed crept into the church. So emperor made a degree that the Athanasius uh, uh, doctrine is the creed of the Christianity. And... Uh, that is how the initial the false doctrine began to crept inside the church. Very good. So, very good example. So, what next point uh, can we understand from this uh, paragraph uh, of this volume? Anybody else? Jonah brother, what's your thought? Uh, Any example? See, this paragraph also tells that, uh, as all know, uh, uh, 
Okay. So, brother has commented, uh, Brother Dyson uh, saying, uh, confess your sins to the Pope. Your sins will be forgiven. Is another uh, false doctrine that uh, you see uh, crept uh, you see in, uh, into the church uh, during the paper system. That's very good. You see, confessing your sins. Uh, Apostle John, in the book of uh, Gospel of John, also tells to confess your sins uh, one to another. But does not mean that you confess all your sins which you do in your personal life? Uh, Apostle John actually speaks of the sin which is committed against the Ecclesia as a church as a whole due to our misbehavior. But uh, this doctrine was completely misunderstood, you see. And uh, a confession chamber was made where all the people were, uh, you see, who were committed sin, they could confess uh, and uh, share all these things to the, you see, father and uh, his sins would be forgiven. So that also one of the, you see, false doctrines that kept uh, very good. Okay, uh, Sister Visha, you can share your thoughts. Yes, brother. Uh, I'll take the two persons, brother, in this paragraph. Uh, Zwingli and uh, Melanchthon, Malank these two members, brother. Actually, if you see the Zw uh, Zwingli, he is from the uh, Reformation in Switzerland. And uh, <clears throat> it is a controversy where in a controversy in 1522, brother. And he was noted in the corruption in Ecclesia and uh, he uh, attacked to the uh, custom of the fasting during uh, Lent days. And uh, this is the one um, after becoming as a clergy, they are also can be married. These are marriages are permitted for the clergy. That is the one uh, he was taken the points against of the uh, papacy and he was uh, made the, everyone to be aware of it and he was given the uh, completely the like a reformation and come to the uh, Melanchthon he is from the uh, German actually uh, German Lutheran reformer in 1897 and he is invested the Pauline uh, doctrines, which is the faith in God was the more important than the God deeds. That is his motto. And he gave the uh, reformation. So here in this, uh, one of the point main is reformation moment. It's nothing but which is making everyone to get the awareness what is the truth what is a false doctrines so the a father was used to different members different source to make the people enlighten and what is the truth that is my standpoint brother thank you sir that's a good uh, this is a study made about uh, zingli and uh, melakton so these two persons uh, is mentioned uh, in this volume so, how the Reformation uh, that began with Martin Luther, uh, it continued uh, uh, as a very good uh, thought. Uh, thank you. Uh, so, any other uh, thing did you understand from this uh, uh, paragraph? It says, the whole world, the whole civilized world was enslaved by this papacy system. So, what is this uh, papacy system? What do you understand by this word papacy system? Uh, the brother from Solomon Island, anybody? What do you mean when we say about, uh, so what do you think about when you say about the papacy system? Which is the papacy system? Jonah brother? Which is the great papacy system? Actually, uh, brother, sorry. Actually, we don't know what is papacy system because we didn't go into papacy system as well. So we don't understand what is papacy system. Okay. Good, brother. See, papacy system is actually uh, the term that is used for the Pope's rule. You all know about Pope. Are you all familiar with Pope? Yes, we hear about it. Yeah, good. So Pope is the one 
who is uh, controlling the entire uh, the Roman uh, Catholic system. So his system of ruling is called as the papacy system. Now why the term papacy is used? Uh, if you go to the history and if you see, originally in Rome, the emperors used to rule the complete uh, Roman Empire. But uh, you have been studying uh, in the Antichrist period. Uh, we are studying that class also. What happened uh, was after the death of uh, Constantine, you see, uh, Justinian emperor uh, comes to picture. And Justinian was a very orthodox man. And uh, he never wanted to take the title of uh, that uh, religious uh, leader. Hence, uh, he gave the title to the Bishop of Rome. And then the Bishop of Rome was called as Pope. Pope is a Latin word which means Papa. Papa for whom, father for whom, for all the bishops of this world, Pope was considered to be the father. Hence, that word Papa or Pope is, was used. At that time, all the Rome, you see, they were under the pagan religion. Pagan means what? Pagan means actually that's the religion that was followed by the Roman Empire before becoming Christians. Like for example, in India, all the people are called as Indians. And the religion which they follow in India, which is the religion they follow primarily in India, Hindus. Very good, brother. Exactly right. So, in the same way, in the entire Rome, the religion they used to follow is pagan, paganism. So, once they got converted to Christianity, that began with the emperor of Constantine. You see, so slowly what happened was that they came to become Christians, but there was no Bible, there was no functions, no celebrations, nothing. So it was very difficult for them to be in the church, to stay as Christians. So hence what happened, slowly, slowly, this bishop and pope, to retain them, began to, you see, implement all the festivals that was there in the paganism into the church. So, tot so slowly what happened, that paganism began to crept inside the church. Hence, that system of uh, mingling with uh, paganism and Christianity, that term is, is called as papacy. So, pope, popacy, pope's rule along mixed with uh, this pagan uh, doctrines uh, and the uh, pagan uh, theory, that system is called as Paganism, sorry, papacy. Okay, you got the term papacy, but then now hope you are all clearly understood about papacy, that word papacy. Yes. Okay, so the corrupt Roman Catholic system, which was the, including uh, the pagan uh, festivals, uh, celebrations, that is called as papacy. Okay, so here that word papacy is used. So, what happened was that all the false doctrines are crept inside the church. Hence, we read in the Bible, uh, kindly read Revelation 18, 3. Can anybody read Revelation 18, 3, brother? Before that one, can somebody read Revelation 17, 5? Revelation 17, 5. Hmm. Uh, Revelation 17.5 mm -hmm. And on her, on her forehead 17.4 brother Pardon me Sorry. And read from 17.4 uh, 17.4 The woman was 
array in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and precious stone. Pearls having in her hand golden cup full of abomination and the filthiness of her fornication. And on her forehead a name was writing Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of hallowed of the abomination of the earth. Mm. So here you see that false church, that uh, papacy system is compared to a woman. In verse 4, it says the woman was uh, arrayed in purple, scarlet color and decked with precious stones. But in her hand, she is having a golden cup. What is that golden cup that is in the hand of papacy? That is the word of God. They use the same Bible, but uh, that is the golden cup. But what is inside the cup? It further says, having a golden cup in her hand, which is full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. They have the Bible in their hand, but what is inside the Bible, if you see, it is completely filled with all sorts of false doctrines. You see, like uh, false doctrines, what uh, sister said about Trinity. You see, false doctrines uh, about a uh, confession of the sins, uh, false doctrines about uh, hell, false doctrines about soul, false doctrines about the Lord's memorial supper. See, these are the things uh, which were totally against the Bible. All these things began to crept inside the church. Hence, uh, this uh, system is termed as Babylon. Hope you all understand about the term Babylon. Where does the Bible first speak about Babylon? Where do we read first time about, Bi about Babylon in the Bible? Any idea? Okay, I'll give you a clue. It comes in book of Genesis. Book of Daniel. Eh? Uh, very good. That's also a good example, book of Daniel. But before that one, if you see... First, it appears in the book of Genesis. Any idea? Book of Genesis, where do we read about Babylon? Okay, I'll give you one more clue. After the flood, it comes. After the flood, what did the people do? Genesis 10 chapter. They began to build a great tower. Babylon. Yes, brother. So what did they build actually? They built a tower to go to where? Babel. Very good. You see? So similarly, today the great church system claims we are all taking all the people to heaven. You see? So the great tower was built after the flood forgetting the promise of God that God would never destroy this entire earth through flood. So, there what happened? You see, God confused their language. Until then, everybody had a common language. So, God confused the language. They were scattered. Hence, that word Babylon or Babel, you see, it means confusion. So, similarly, in the Bible, this false church system is called as confusion in the sight of God. Now, now let us read Revelation 18.3, brother. Hmm. Yes, brother. Revelation 18.3 hmm. said, For all the nation have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. The kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the magchan mag mag of earth have become rich through the abundance of her luxury. Very good, sir. So here it says, All the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. 
she had a golden cup but inside that golden cup there was a wine of false doctrine <laughs> the whole world today it is actually drunk of that false doctrine any christians you meet and you ask about any of the doctrines they will all tell the same the same thing that are taught in the roman catholic churches there is no difference at all that's what brother russell says in this paragraph you see the civilized world were almost wholly enslaved by this system and uh, led to worship the tradition and creeds of men you see instead of the bible you see and uh, that is the time that this reformation started okay now let me ask a question who is the morning star of reformation who is called as the morning star of reformation see brother russell mentions lot of name like luther zwingli uh, melchthon wickliffe knox others now among them who is called as the morning star of reformation martin luther are you very close there was a person before martin luther he, he began with it but martin luther ended that uh, reformation he, he took it to the peak and ended that's a very good attempt so any other suggestions he was called as a uh, morning star of reformation you see it began from the fifth church period in revelation 7 chapter there are seven churches now ephesus uh, smyrna pergamos thyatira sardis philadelphia laodicea the seven ha paul oh no okay one more try ha one star for reformation anybody anybody else from the online who is called as the morning star of reformation okay it was john wickliff okay so john wickliff actually he began the reformation movement you see in initial initial stages he used to prepare the brethren and uh, he gave uh, importance and preference to the bible uh, you see he translated a part of the bible uh, also and uh, he used to prepare the uh, brothers and go and make them to go and teach uh, you see to whichever places they went uh. so that is how the initial reformation began but as you said it went to the peak during the period of luther so what did luther do what was the main thing of uh, about luther's uh, reformation anybody what did luther do luther uh, printed 95 theses no yes so what did he do printed with uh, 95 theses where did he go and nail it printed at may uh, the just solely by faith eh? yes very good just solely by faith so he printed those 95 points and where did he post uh, that uh, 95 points where did he place that 95 points okay see martin luther was a monk see something like a father uh, in a church you see so he was in germany he pointed 95 mistakes some of the important 95 mistakes which the roman catholic church did and one of the mistake you see was um about the human soul that the soul dies that but they claim the soul doesn't die about the hell you see about the trinity about the you see the lord's body the lord's memorial and so many so things you know what did luther do he printed this 95 points and he nailed it to his church door you see on what date did martin luther nail this uh, 95 theses on a church door does anybody know what date did they do it anybody okay 
Please note it down. These things are uh, quite important. October 31st. October 31st, 1575. Okay. Now, why October 31st? After October 31st, what comes? Which date comes? After October 31st, what comes? Are you saying? Nobody knows. After October 31st, what does it come? Reformation. No. After October 31st, you, from the calendar, what comes actually? November 1st. November 1st. Very good. Now, what is November 1st? For the Roman Catholics, what is November 1st? Oh, there is no Catholic people here. Any uh, Francis, do you know any idea? Do you have any idea what is November 1st? So, yes, sir. sorry, we we don't attend Catholics, so we oh. don't know anything about the system. Okay, 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 good. Yeah. So, you are very clear from the Babylon system. <laughs> okay. <laughs> See, November 1st is a All Saints Day. Okay? All Saints Day means what? All the relics, that means the cloths, the pen, the book, the shoes, the specs, what all things the religious people, you see, they used, it will all be kept. They believe that those are very holy. If you touch that holy thing, your sins will be forgiven. That is November 1st, All Saints Day. And November 2nd is All Souls Day. They believe that November 2nd, you see, all the, uh, you see, souls, uh, uh, we need to go to the graveyard and uh, do that worship and uh, pay homage to them. And uh, you see, so those things and all. But November 1st was a very important uh, day for all these uh, pagan Christians. And nobody would miss that one because they were all committing sin. They had no knowledge, knowledge of the Bible. So anybody who did not attend the church... He was sure to attend the church on November 1st. He would never miss it. So Martin Luther knew that everybody would definitely come to the church tomorrow. So on the October 31st night, he nailed this 95 thesis in a very big, you see, uh, cut out on the church door. So whoever entered the church on November 1st, the first thing he did was that he read all these 95 points. So, all the people who read this one, you see, they began to spread this one. About the 95 theses in just one week, the entire churches in Germany was totally, all the Roman Catholic churches was actually totally destroyed. This is how the Reformation started. It was a very excellent work, you see. So, that's what our brother Russell says. You see, these called attention to the fact that the papacy had laid aside the Bible and substituted the degree and dogmas of the church and pointed out the erroneous teachings and practices. You see, they opposed it. They showed everything. You see, the reformation went on very well, dear brethren. You see, the Pope, you see, he gave summons to the Martin, you see, Luther. But Luther never accepted that, you see, that, what do you say, uh, that uh, mm -hmm. bull, which uh, you see, uh, summons uh, was given to the Martin Luther. He burnt it and he said, I will stand for what cause I stand for. Even if each and every brick, uh, you see, is a devil, I would definitely stand for it. That was the strong stand of uh, Martin Luther, you see. And uh, Martin Luther was called for a debate uh, in uh, by the emperor also. But there also he stood very strongly, you see, and uh, opposed the doctrines of, uh, you see, uh, the paper system. Okay. Now, next what happened? I say this reformation began well. But what happened next? You see, did the reformation continue? Did the, did the uh, protest continue? You see, no. This group who revolted against the Roman Catholic system and came out, were called as the Protestants. 
Now, why were they called as Protestants? Because they protested against this uh, Roman Catholic or a paper system and came. Hence, they were called as Protestants. Uh, but what happened uh, to these Protestants, if you see the once they came out uh, from the Protestant, uh, from the Roman Catholic system, these Protestants also cooled off. You see, Martin Luther revolted and many people followed the teachings of Martin Luther and came out. It was there only till the leaders of the Protestants, this one, were alive. Until Martin Luther was alive, you see, they were very good. But once when Martin Luther died, the Lutheran denomination was formed. You see, John Knox, you see, all the followers of John Knox, they began to segregate and they began to form a denomination. You see, John Calvin, he was one of the reformer, reformers uh, along with Martin Luther. You see, when John Calvin came out, uh, you see, and when he died, the Calvinist group was formed, Presbyterians was formed, you see. Similarly, many denominations were formed. So today, uh, almost how many denominations are there in Christianity? In the, among the Protestants, how many denominations are there? Approximately how many are there? How many are there? Approximately. Hmm? Thousand. Yeah. Almost nearly a thousand. You see? See, Presbyterian, uh, Lutheran, Baptist, uh, you see? Etc. CSI, you see? Huh? Only Jesus, uh, Trinitarians, uh, you see? Many, many denominations still there. But all these denominations settled there itself. They did not continue that, uh, you see, reformation. They did not continue and uh, come to a greater light. They settled there itself. Uh, you see, they did not uh, develop that one. That's what uh, in this paragraph, uh, you see, our brother Russell says, uh, you see. So, uh, that is the question here. See, the question was that among, on, in this paragraph, what was the nature of Reformation movement? You see, what was the nature? Reformation went on well. It was very good. It was very excellent. They revolted and came back. But the second part of the question, and why have Protestants made a little progress since the days of Reformers? Now, you answer for this question. Why have the Protestants made so little progress since the days of uh, reformers. Why haven't the Protestants uh, developed concerning the knowledge of God's word? Why haven't they developed? Anybody? Because the system mixed up with the, with the truth. Very good, sir. Excellently, absolutely right. The same way you see the Roman Catholic uh, committed mistake, the same thing was done by the Protestants. Uh, hence, uh, we read now Revelation 17.5. She is called as mother of harlots. Mother means what? Uh? She must be having daughters. Uh. See, there is a proverb. As is the mother, so is the daughter. You see, the mother is the Roman Catholic system. And uh, the daughter is a Protestant denomination. All the doctrines, you see, of uh, the uh, Roman Catholic system, it all crept inside the Protestant denomination also. Can you name, you see, some of the similarities of the false doctrine that we see today in the Roman Catholic system? You see, the same thing, what do we see in the Protestant denominations? Any doctrines do we see in a similar way? Any example can anybody give? Sorry. 
some of the false doctrines of the Catholic system that is found today in the Protestant denomination. Anybody? Oh, no false doctrines at all. Huh? Tell me. Any wrong doctrines that we see today in the churches? Now, why have you all left the churches? Why? Yes, brother. The, uh, the preaching, the women preach. Very good. The full pit or something like that. Yeah. Very good. Women preaching. Of course, there is no woman preaching in Roman Catholic. But again, women preaching, that's the false doctrine. Very good, sister. See, they began the Reformation. Initially, there was no woman. Martin Luther did not allow the woman to preach. He said, none of the reformers. But slowly, what happened? You see, the male and female, both are equal in sight of God. You see, the woman writes. And what happened? A woman is preaching in, today in the churches. Which is forbidden by the word of God. Continue. Next sister. Very good. Next any example? Brother Jonah. Brother Jonah. Brother Francis. Any examples? Any examples of doctrines you can give? Any any examples? You have heard so much of truth. Which are the examples? Uh, maybe I can speak on what I've been involved in. The mm -hmm. uh, church I've been involved with. So because they preach that. When you dead today, you if you are not uh, in the in Christ, then uh, you have to go to hell. Definitely in hell. Uh, the question is uh, the uh, what is the interpretation there of with uh, hell? That when you dead and you directly went into the hell. Very good, brother. So, yeah. Continue, continue, please continue with that. Uh, so, what, what is your interpretation on that? That's uh, very good. That is also one of the doctrine which was actually in the papacy system, the Roman Catholic system. That is also crept inside the Protestant denomination. See, initially, Martin Luther did not believe the doctrine of hell. He, he protested and he claimed, uh, you see, that... Uh, Hell, uh, you see, uh, the, the real truth about hell. But once the protestants who came back, they never stood for it. Uh, you see, today, the whole protestant denomination believes that uh, hell is a place of torment. So as soon as you accept Christ, you shall be saved. Saved from what? Saved from hell. If you don't accept Christ, if you are not a Christian, then you will go to hell. So, same thing as you told, this is believed by the entire Christianity today. Now, where did this doctrine come from? This doctrine came from the same mother. The daughters began to believe the same thing. Did Jesus ever mention any such thing in the Bible? Imagine, if uh, the whole world of unbelievers were going to hell, a place of torment for eternity to eternity, do you think Jesus would have kept quiet? You see? He would have definitely told everybody to repent. But never ever Jesus used this term. Repent or you shall all go to hell. Did Jesus ever use this word? No. Jesus never spoke that you shall all go to hell. So, this is an example. Very good. Okay, any other example? Any other doctrinal examples? What we see similarity between the uh, Roman Catholic and the Protestants today? No similarities? Not even one? Now sister gave an example, brother gave an example. Any other example? Think. Maybe, maybe soul. Yeah, very good sister. Maybe soul. What happens to the soul after man dies? Yeah, yeah, that's that's uh, one of the things that people uh, get to understand that the soul that us is related to the death. Like uh, when you dead, your soul went to the into the hell. Or if you are not accepting Christ, or if you accepting Christ, your soul went into the heaven. 
very good brother so yeah so that that can you elaborate more on that uh uh the scripture reference of it see the bible clearly says that the soul dies ezekiel 18:4 the soul that sinneth it shall die but today each and every you see eh uh, is a pastor at the funeral he says today our brother soul has gone to heaven or is gone to hell now where does the bible say that the soul goes to hell or heaven you see so the bible says that the soul dies and man remains in the condition of the dead till the second coming of jesus where all the people will come back to life you see so these are the things actually this was not there in the original church at all nobody believed about the immortal soul in the original church this uh, was a theory of the greeks you see greek uh, you see philosopher plato he was the one who introduced all these things in the church you see and uh, the whole world the greeks uh, never believed that uh, you see soul dies uh, they all believed that the soul was immortal so once they also came into christianity what happened these doctrines uh, you see kept in the church uh. but today eh, even the protestants believe the same thing you see while the bible clearly says that all the dead are dead what did jesus say in john 5:28 can anybody read that verse john 5:28 brother you read that job Hmm. Gospel of John. Uh, brother, yeah. His name's sake will read the uh, verse for us. Hmm. John 5 is what? Hmm. John 5, 28. Sorry, brother, come in. 5, 28. 28. Okay, John 5, 28. 28. 5th chapter, 28 verse. John 5:28 You read Lord Yaka Do not be surprised in it the time is coming when all the dead in their graves will hear the voice of God's son Ah be not surprised all that are in the graves now where are everybody now Jesus say that some people are in heaven some people are in hell no He clearly says all that are in the grave you see the bible clearly says everybody are in the grave now how can somebody tell that he is gone to heaven or heaven this is one of the false doctrine you see dear brethren so all the people will come back to life only at second coming of jesus so today you see as the mother taught even the daughters the protestant denomination are believing the same thing they never want to grow they never want to develop they never want to you see come out uh, to the more light of god's words uh, you see you see they all think that uh, that is the plan of god just to believe in jesus your sins are forgiven you are saved that's it so live happy in christ so whatever you what do what do you do for the lord just contribute something give some tithes that is sufficient so what the bible says god's plan is there so nobody wants to understand more about the plan so this is what uh, you see our uh, brother russell uh, is trying to bring uh, in this uh, paragraph uh, so the nature of reformation you see and why the protestants have made a uh, little uh, progress uh, you see because uh, they have got stagnant uh, you see they become cooled off uh, that's what the bible says no you see uh, what is the condition of the church today revelation 3rd chapter verse 15 we can read from verse 14 15 16 revelation 3rd uh, chapter 14 15 16 
and to the angel of of the and to the angel of the church of the Lord is here, right? This thing saying the says the army, the father, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. 16 so hmm. then because you are lukewarm and neither cool nor hot i will vomit you out of my mouth very good so this is the seventh year the laudition period at the time of the return of our lord jesus the condition of the church is that it is neither hot nor cold they are neither in christ nor are they in the world. They are very neutral persons. You see, what did Jesus say? No man can serve two masters. You see, if you are serving two masters, then you are going to please one, you are going to displease the other. So, this is the condition of the church today. They don't want to be in the world also. They don't want to be completely immersed in Christ also. Because it is very tough to live a, you see, a holy life. Without the world, they can't, uh, you see, sustain in this world. So, that will be very difficult. Uh. So, what does uh, uh, Jesus say? Because you are neither warm nor cold, I will spew you out of my mouth. You see, I will vomit you. That means reject. So, hence, uh, Jesus has rejected the system. Because they never wanted to develop or come to the more light of God's plan. Hence, that system is rejected. You see, Babylon is fallen, fallen. Okay, uh, any comments? Anybody, any, anybody wants to add any comments or any thoughts on this paragraph? Yes, brother. I think there's a comment regarding the... the the doctrine that we base on the soul there. I think that the the words of the meaning that's the that's the confusion of these uh, doctrines. They misunderstand uh, soul and the body of human beings as a human being uh, because uh, when the God breathed into man. That's where the the body means ground. We're coming from the ground, and the bread of life came into human being. That's where word soul came into existence, and uh, that is where the confusion is. Uh, when the men dead, they confuse that uh, soul is going out, but actually the soul is uh, that word should be vanished out from the 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 interpretation. Because that the, the spirit, like Ecclesiastes said, the spirit went by to God. But uh, a body went down to dust to dust, and the word soul ceased to be exist, exist from the. Yeah, that's what I I come to understand it. Yeah. Oh, that's very wonderful, brother. Very good understanding of the scriptures. That's absolutely right. That is where the misunderstanding is created. So man was formed from the dust of the ground and God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. They think that God infused his soul, uh, you see, into the human being. Uh. So once a man dies, the body goes to the dust uh, and uh, you see the breath of life, uh, they think that's a soul and soul goes back to God, uh, you see. But uh, as you said, we need to study the scriptures. You quoted about Ecclesiastes, a very good verse. You see, the spirit goes back to God, not the soul goes back to God. We need to study the scriptures. You see, how, how do we study the Bible? Here a little, there a little. Search the scriptures, none shall miss or made. The entire Bible has to be taken, neatly segregate and collect all the verses about the condition of death. You see, what happens after death? You see, what is the meaning of the soul? 
So if you see all the scriptures, that's a beautiful explanation which gives the soul dies. Because the Bible cannot say in one verse the soul dies, in other verse the soul is immortal. If these two types of scriptures are there, it is our responsibility as a Christian to sit and study the word of God. Very good. You are all been uh, doing that one. I appreciate your uh, involvement and uh, you see your response uh, and the way you answer the questions and uh, that's a very good uh, uh, sign that you are all growing. Thank you. Anybody, any, any th anything, any thoughts, any suggestions you want to make? Anybody? Janna sister, would you like to add anything? So we can give uh, five minutes so anyone can ask questions. Yeah, definitely. Anybody has got any questions also, can uh, please ask. Okay, let me ask a question to you all. Should I ask one question? Everybody is silent. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay. Uh, are you all able to understand my English? Yes, okay. it's, it's, it's clear. Okay, okay, you're all able to follow. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Lord bless. Uh, anybody in online? Anybody would like to add anything? Or shall we stop the volume study? Okay, okay, thank no, you. Uh, just, uh, please, please. Yeah, just, uh, just a uh, last uh, comment. Uh, maybe, yeah, that's good. Uh, the study is uh, coming like this because uh, some of us have been in the church for long, but because since maybe we don't come into basically those studies and understand properly the words which have been uh, re written in English from Greek, Latin, and Hebrew. So those are the misunderstanding and thing they thank you for the study because at 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 the end we all need to understand uh we need to we all want to uh, uh, go to the side of the plan of God or we need to accept the plan of God instead of just uh living out but the point is you say as we need to uh do the study and more carefully and understand the words otherwise we continue to practice uh unhealthy doctrine yeah that's it very good brother just shall live by faith faith on the word of god very good i uh, appreciate your uh views uh, so, Lord bless your all efforts. So, definitely God will make uh, very plain upon the table. So, that whosoever reads it may run. So, Lord bless. Thank you, everybody. So, convey our regards to all the dear brethren.